Today, I think we're reminded of what's really, really special about Puerto Rico. The amazing, rich, vibrant culture. The art, the music, the dance, the food, the people. So, let's jump in. What's the DMO actually doing? And so we committed to a long list of initiatives and we made a lot of promises to you on July 2nd. The first thing we promised is we're gonna unify the brand. Discover Puerto Rico inherited two brands when we came into the marketplace. One was from Meet Puerto Rico and one was from See Puerto Rico. So immediately we knew we had to transition those brands into one unified name that became not only the name of our organization, but will be the consumer-facing brand name moving forward, and that's Discover Puerto Rico. We have a very important goal. Not only we need to make sure that people recognize Puerto Rico and the DMO offshore, but we need to make sure that it's a reputable organization here. We really do have an extraordinary product and we really need to start selling it that way. We didn't just open up a DMO, we went through a very deliberate plan. Some of this was required by Act 17, some of it's required just by being a good organization, and some of this was required to make sure that we didn't just open an organization, but we laid the groundwork for a potential transformation to a world-class DMO. We knew that we had a very big mission and we're up against a major milestone with the one year anniversary of Hurricane Maria. The most important thing for me from the beginning is to neutralize negative coverage. One of the first things that we've done on island is the Google destination program. Sometimes we think we find things that look great, like El Moro. This is a great picture, nothing to do here. Or Crash Boat Beach Knowledge Panel Photo Gallery. This is not the foot that we want to put forward into this huge ecosystem. So we need to go through this, develop content, and make sure that we get those images out of those knowledge panels and the right images in those. Beat.com. I want to talk a little bit about the RFPs because this is something we promised you from the outset, that we would choose business partners, not based on politics or personal relationships, but based on what was best for the industry and your businesses. We received 33 proposals from creative agencies. 36% of the agencies who responded to the digital proposals were local on the island. 24% of the agencies who responded to the creative RFP were on island. And we narrowed it down to three finalists. One of the things our company does is we we spend most of our time measuring the effectiveness of advertising campaigns for destinations. One of the things we developed was a model so you don't have to go out there and try it and then find out it didn't work. You can actually use data to figure out what is the best mix of markets. We are an agency inspired by travel. It used to be when we looked at a website's analytics, we were getting traffic from all these different places. With that, you're seeing a huge push towards voice search. For a lot of our clients, we have survey data because we're out surveying and finding out where people are coming from and the effectiveness of the campaign. And so that gives us an, a rich data in terms of what are their perceptions of the destination. We have to build websites that give those platforms the information they need to answer those questions. And we also kicked off a very successful publicity campaign partnering with our friends in Punta Santiago. We ended up generating a significant amount of ROI and a significant amount of earned media that was much more positive than we expected. And that publicity campaign not only attracted a lot of positive publicity, it did a couple other things. It reinforced the message that Puerto Rico is strong and resilient, and it's not just coming back, it's coming back better than ever. We had such a positive response from the media, um, not only nationally on the mainland, but internationally to help us tell our story, that we wanted to turn that into a little case study. Cover the Progress has received nearly 900 million media impressions globally, totaling an earned media value of over $11 million to date. In the first three months that we've been here, we have touched over 20 top local outlets. We've had over 18 one-on-ones with Mr. Brad Dean. At this moment, we have 539,000 earned media value when it comes to local media. We are going to really change the way and enhance the way we present ourselves at some of the most important industry events. Six cities, over 500 meeting professionals, travel agents, and media, and one message. That Puerto Rico is not just open for business, we are ready and eager to welcome you back to the island. In the month of November alone, we are hosting 20, 20 different uh, 
site inspections, fam trips, events here in Puerto Rico. So we're extremely, extremely busy bringing people down and, and sharing our message. Up to this weekend, we have 12 fams. That means over 45 people came to Puerto Rico. In the next week, we're gonna have three more. If we put together all those followers, we're talking about more than 8 million followers have been seeing stories about Puerto Rico. How can we start to pull away from the pack? And we believe that our culture is how we're going to do that. Starting to tell the stories of the rich dance and the music and the art and the history, the culinary scene here is something that's really going to help us differentiate the island. We're short time in, but we have a long vision and we're deeply, deeply committed to working with you to ensure that the best days of Puerto Rico and its tourism industry lie before us and not behind us. Thank you for being here today.